All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Today, we're going to be talking about CNC's, more specifically, the Fox Alien Masuda 3S. Uh, this is a 400 by 400 working area machine in its current configuration, but there are a lot of different ways you can expand the machine. Uh, there's, they sell upgrades to it. So if you're looking at getting into CNC's and you're looking at getting into something small, portable, don't have a whole lot of room to work with, and you're on a budget of, say, $1,000 or so, you may want to give this guy a look. So stick around, and we're going to get back, and I'm going to tell you what I have found with the machine as I've been testing it for about a week and a half or so now and uh, the kind of results you can expect from it. All right, guys, so first of all, I wanna say this, I'm digging the color of the machine. So <laughs> if you haven't noticed already, it does have my favorite orange accents on it. Uh, now I will say this is a, what I would consider a, a entry level machine, but it's got surprisingly good performance. Uh, this machine's 400 by 400, uh, as far as the way it sits now, give or take a little bit. Uh, it's very rigid. This machine does use uh, rails and belts. It doesn't use screws, but I've been really surprised at the strength this machine brings, even with the belts. Uh, they've also taken, because it does have belts, they've also taken extra care and put these brackets over here to keep a lot of the chips and debris and stuff from getting in the belts or on the belts. And so far, that seems to be working really well. Now, I was a little skeptical about this little 400 watt spindle here because I'm used to something bigger. As you can see, we're sitting on top of my Spoko 5 Pro. So when I look at these machines, I have to uh, keep in mind they're not this machine. But guys, this thing is really surprising. Uh, it does have closed loop, ste loop steppers that even my Shapoko uh, does not have closed loop steppers. So that was kind of a big deal. And so far guys, the machine is torquey. Uh, these steppers are strong, they're huge. If you look, I think they're as big, if not bigger than the ones that are on my Shapoko. So that's, that's, that's awesome. Uh, I can tell you they have not stalled. I've put the machine in some of my oopses uh, during the testing. I've put the machine in a couple of predicaments and it pulled through it without any problem whatsoever. Uh, it has not, no engrave that I have run has, has missed a step. Uh, it's, it's doing a really good job. I was surprised at that. Uh, this machine also has this really cool uh, little control box here, which has all your buttons and everything on it. Uh, it's got the e-stop. The e-stop is kind of unique because you can actually press the e-stop to activate it and press it again to release it. You don't have to do that whole twist and pop thing. Uh, the machine does have limit switches all the way around. Like I said, uh, running, guys, this thing runs smooth. Uh, I've been running it with uh, G -Send, uh, the uh, G-Sender from CNC Labs. And let me just show you how fast and smooth this thing is and quiet. Okay, so, so listen to this when I move this machine. Okay, it's really quiet. If you can't, I don't know if you can tell, but it is really quiet. It is also fast. Uh, I'll put it on rapid. That's going to put it at 5,000 uh, millimeters movement speed. And I'm going to move it to the front right corner over there. So the machine is really smooth. Uh, like I said, all in all, I have not found anything really other than the fact that I didn't get the dust collection with it. Uh, they didn't send me that. Uh, so other than, other than not having dust collection, I really haven't found anything that I didn't like about it. Uh, it's done a really good job. Uh, I've made a couple of trays with it because, you know, I really didn't have any projects. So if you don't have a project thought up, guys, you just make random trays. Uh, I did this one out of oak, uh, really pushing the, the, the limits of the machine. Uh, I was doing like a three quarter of a millimeter uh, depth. I'm running about 70 millimeters a second with an uh, eighth inch uh, single flute upcut end mill. It done a really good job. Uh, I was a little worried that I was gonna break my little cheap bits because they were really cheap bits, but it done a good job uh, and cut this one out really, really nice. This one's poplar. I just did this one today. 
uh, went ahead after I did the, the tray, I went ahead and did in the bottom of it here and did a little US flag uh, using some other bits that I bought on Amazon. And I'll drop links to those bits below for you. Uh, it comes with a few very basic bits, but I, I've gotten spoilt using other bits with other machines. And so I had to order me uh, a few bits to play with. Uh, but this is Poplar. Uh, it does a really good job with Poplar. It's, it's kind of a soft material, but it, it, it does a good job machining. Uh, the only thing with Poplar is you don't want to push it too hard because you can get some splintering with it uh, if you don't get your speeds and feeds just right. Uh, but I've been playing with this machine for a few days and about got it dialed in to where I know where uh, it's going to perform its best. And it's been doing a really good job. Uh, anywhere from 50 to up to 80 millimeters a second. Uh, anywhere from, I've been doing three quarter millimeter passes on uh, oak at some speeds all the way up to millimeter and a half with MDF. Uh, I made this little guy with the machine to hold the bits, I made this out of MDF, and I was running like a millimeter and a half deep uh, depth of cut, probably about 80 millimeters a second travel speed on these, and it just shredded this little piece of uh, half inch MDF to make this with. So, so, all right, so as you can see with these projects that I've done, the machine is very capable. Even with the 400 watt spindle, it does a really good job. So for a thousand bucks, you get this thing the way it sits, basically. It's, I think it's 999 uh, currently. The only things that I have changed with this machine is I did add me an extra layer on my spool board right here, uh, just to give me a little more wiggle room uh, and make this spool board just a bit sturdier than what it was from the factory. I will say, unlike some of the other small CNC's, they did put the center support uh, in the spool board. So as far as rigidity of the spool board, this one is more rigid than some, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and just beef it up. And so I added this half inch piece of MDF. And also that gives me a little more forgiveness in the event that I go through it. Uh, I don't tear up anything, which let me move this thing out of the way and I'll let you guys see. So far, <laughs> I went a little deep with this one cut right here, but the rest of them, I haven't even made it all the way through the tape. Uh, I've been using primarily super glue uh, and painter's tape hold down. I did 3D print me some little clamps over here and I'm using it with some of the bolts and stuff that the machine came with. Uh, but so far, super glue and painter's tape has been my friend. Now, I will tell you, this is, this is not the most overpowered mechanism for doing uh, CNC work, but it'll get you started. You can learn the basics. Eighth inch bits, if you get the correct bits, and like I said, you could even get the eighth inch, eighth, eighth inch Genie bits, the machine does a really, really good job. Now, quarter inch bits with this 400 watt spindle, I played around with them, but it doesn't quite have enough torque and RPMs uh, in the spindle for that. But Fox Alien did send a 65 millimeter uh, spindle holder for the machine and you can either use a Makita or something similar uh, trim router with this machine. I think they sell their own version of a trim router that you can you can pop in here and use. This thing is really quiet. So you guys that that are working in your basement or in a spare room or something like that and you don't want a whole lot of noise, this spindle, although it is not the most powerful spindle around, it does do a really good job. It's relatively quiet. Even with the bits interacting with the material, it's just not that loud. Uh, the 10,000 RPMs that it's running uh, with a good sharp bit, it, it throws good chips, but it keeps the noise to a minimum. So there's a plus for you. But if that's not enough horsepower for you, you can always upgrade uh, using the 65 millimeter sleeve and put something bigger in there. Uh, all of the controls are on this little con this controller here. So as far as like homing the machine, you can hit the home button right there. Uh, it's going to run through its homing process and go up here to the front left corner. Uh, you can pause the job, resume the job. Of course, you got the E stop. You've got your variable speed control for your spindle. There's a lot of different controls on this box. Uh, it also has uh, a slot for offline controller. This machine will also work with a laser module if that's something you're into. Uh, Fox Alien does sell a laser module that goes inside there. Uh, 
Uh, also, you have over here, that's where the switch to turn uh, from the laser to the spindle is, as well as the power wires for the laser are over here on the front of the machine. It does have also the standard USB connection for connecting to your computer. I'm running mine with my little uh, Optiplex 7050 using G Sender from CNC Labs. You can also use such things as Candle or uh, UGS. Any of the, the G code senders will work with the machine because it is a G code based machine, as well as for file design, I'm running Vectric. Uh, you can use Vectric and you, as long as you have the correct post processor turned on when you export the file, it'll work fine. Uh, all the files that I've made, all these little projects that I've been playing around with were built in Vectric with, for the machine. So whichever software you have, uh, you should be able to export to G-Code and run the machine. So one of the big things that I noticed about uh, Fox Aliens uh, machines and their website is they offer you all types of avenues to upgrade the machine. Uh, this machine comes with an extent, you can get an extension kit for it. I think my buddy Steve over at Ventari's Workshop, he's got the same machine. He's going to be trying it out. Uh, so I'll try to remember as soon as I see his video to drop a link to his videos as well on this machine. But I believe Steve's gonna be putting an extension on his so that you guys that maybe you want a, a CSC that you can grow into and you can do bigger projects, but you don't wanna have a four foot by four foot work area. Uh, if you took this and doubled the width of this machine, that would give you a pretty good size work area for most of the things that you do. So with this machine, you do have avenues to upgrade the machine and get that work area bigger to do those bigger jobs, as well as changing out the spindle uh, to give you a little more RPMs and a little more horsepower to get the job done uh, with that bigger work area. Because with the bigger work area, bigger projects, you're probably gonna wanna amp up uh, the spindle just a little bit. Uh, but I think as far as getting started, learning the craft, getting your feet wet, this would definitely be a good buy-in. Uh, As you guys know that I'm an advocate of not everybody wants to rush out and buy a $4,000 CNC. And you don't have to, to make things. Uh, if you want to make small stuff like these guys right here, you can do that just fine with this machine. Uh, one person can move this machine. If you've got a good strong back, you can move this machine by yourself. Personally, I would recommend a two-man carry uh, to be able to move this, but if you need something that's portable that you can move around your shop, that is possible with this machine. Uh, if you're wanting something uh, that you can just kind of roll off into the corner, this would be relatively easy to fit on most of the, the, the workbenches and things like that that you can get from, say, Home Depot, Lowe's, and places like that. So there's a lot of options of how to, to, how to have this thing and keep it in your shop. I'm going to be moving it over here to the top of the toolbox, uh, once we get through the video just to get it out of my way and get it out of the way of my big machine in case I need to use it uh, But I will be continuing to use it and use it with small projects And of course I'll have it in the shop in case you guys have questions about it uh, Because I do like the color and so far I love the machine. It is smooth as glass installation and assembly was relatively Simple, but there is some, okay? It is going to take you a little while to get up and going with this machine. It's not going to be a 10-minute job. Uh, it probably take you an hour or two uh, if you're, you know, taking your time, doing it the right way, going over it really well. Uh, the books and documentation were, were well written, uh, easy to follow. You'll see that there's tags on all of the wiring connections to try to help keep that straight. So I didn't see any major tripping hazards as far as the assembly goes. So we're not gonna go diving headfirst into that. Uh, I'll leave it to the videos that are already out there as well as the book because I just followed the book and it helped me get the machine successfully put together with no problems. So that's gonna be it for now guys, but if you got questions about the machine or if you have experience with the machine and you wanna share it with everybody, feel free to drop those comments down below. Uh, the, the closed loop steppers was, was a new thing for me and I'm really impressed. Uh, with how they performed on this machine. And I think you wouldn't be going wrong with this machine. For $1,000, it is a little more than some of the other machines that I've talked about in the past as far as entry level machines. But with the closed loop steppers, uh, the 400 watt spindle as opposed to some of the little itty bitty, you know, 75 to 150, 200 watt spindles, I think that's a pretty good upgrade as well as the possibilities for expansion with this machine. I think all those things together puts it in a class above 
the very basic machines. This is this I would call this more of a mid-level uh, machine in its current configuration. You start slapping extensions on here and all that, you can get it on up. But I think the the closed loop steppers is a big plus. And if you're going to start off with a machine, as you expand it, putting the bigger work area, the bigger power pack as far as the spindle goes. Uh, it's, it's just going to make this thing into a heck of a good package for somebody to get started in CNC's with. So there you go, guys. Like I said, drop your input. If you've got input about the machine, drop it down below. And uh, that way we can share it with everybody as they're trying to make their decisions. But So we'll be dropping links down below to the machine. Uh, those will be affiliate uh, links, of course. But if you're interested in getting into CNC's, guys, and like I said, you're looking for a smaller machine that you can expand later without having to spend a whole lot of money today, a uh, thousand bucks gets you in it, so it's not a it's not a bad deal. Uh, I like the machine, and so far it has handled everything I threw at it. So there you go. But until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.